Thank you for joining us for Kremlin News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. Let's get started. Tonight we are seeing brand new video showing the moments leading up to a deadly police shooting in downtown Spokane on Monday. Police say a man holding a knife threatened to kill himself and stab others near Maine and Howard. Now more witnesses are coming forward, including a woman who pulled out her phone. She is sharing video with Krem 2's Kyle Simchuk, new at 10 tonight. Well, as you're about to see, the woman who shot this video put herself in a very dangerous situation. At one point, she found herself between this man with a knife and Spokane police. While she doesn't think officers needed to shoot and kill this person, she also doesn't believe they should face any charges. I heard somebody say, I don't want to hurt you. And I looked and I saw that. That's when Toya pulled out her phone and started recording, following this man in black, holding a knife, following another man who asked him several times to put it down. Sir, put that down. Police were already on their way and learned the suspect was on the phone with his probation officer, threatening to stab people and kill himself. And he kept pleading with that man, I don't want to hurt you. So I kept walking behind the man. The police came running down and that's when they said, drop your weapon, drop your weapon. He's done and they tased him three times first. He did not go down, but he dropped that knife and he went back to pick it up and that's when they shot him. It was evident that uh, something was going on, right? Lauren Diorenzo heard the gunshots from inside her restaurant, Soulful Soups and Spirits. I just went to the front door. I saw the police. I realized we should probably lock the door. I locked the door and just told everyone they needed to stay inside for now. The sheriff came in and they interviewed the folks who had seen uh, part of the incident and then uh, got everyone else's names and numbers and then said, hey, we're going to get you guys out of here. Toya says deputies interviewed her as well and she's given law enforcement a copy of her video. Police have not identified the man officers shot but confirmed he died at the hospital. Toya thinks the man should still be alive but doesn't think the officers involved should face charges. I can't sit there and say, yeah, charge him. I'm not going to say that because that's not where my mind is at and heart is at because everybody got to protect themselves, right? But it didn't take two of them to do that to that man. No, it didn't. And Spokane Mayor Lisa Brown has scheduled a press conference for 11 a.m. tomorrow to talk about public safety and to provide an update on the search for Spokane's next police chief. That all begins at 11 a.m. and we'll have a reporter there. Reporting in downtown Spokane, Kyle Simchuk, Krim 2 News. And so far this year, Spokane Police and the Spokane County Sheriff's Office have shot and killed four people, including the man from the story you just heard. In our effort to bring you more to every story, we're looking into how Spokane's police violence measures up to cities across the country. So take a look at this. Mappingpoliceviolence.us lists Spokane fourth overall for the average annual rate of killing. The data is based on population between January of 2013 and January 31st of this year. You can see here 23 people were killed by Spokane police in that period. The two police shootings from this week are not included in the data. Happening tomorrow, as Kyle mentioned, Spokane Mayor Lisa Brown will hold a press conference to address the four deadly Spokane police shootings this year. The mayor will speak on new public safety efforts and the process of looking for a new police and fire chief. Both stepped down after her election. So tune in tomorrow to find out exactly what she has to say. Let's switch gears and talk weather now. We finally saw some much needed sunshine today, and now I think everyone wants to know if it's sticking around. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Magoo to find out what's in store in the coming days. Jeremy? Mark, we got fog. All right, <laughs> when it comes to the overall foggy pattern, you got to stick with me here because I don't think this means we're waking up to another round of really dense fog like what we saw this morning. I think a little bit, not a lot, a little bit, but overly, it looks like our temperatures drop quick enough to freeze a lot of what was down on the ground, all that moisture. We're down to 31 degrees right now in a dew point of 22. That tells me that fog is likely not going to stick around. As we clear out the atmosphere, we wind up getting those clear skies to drop temperatures even more. It's likely most of us fall back into the 20s, some places even into the teens overnight. Tomorrow afternoon, clouds build back in ahead of our next round of snow. That snow widespread down in southern Washington, a little bit of rain mixing in. Here in Spokane and Coeur Lane, it tries, it tries. I think we see some snowflakes, but I don't think we wind up seeing anything major in the way of accumulation. Instead, kind of looks like this. Tomorrow morning, cold. We wind up seeing sun. Clouds increase throughout the day, a high near 40. 
Thursday, it's a chance of snow. I don't think it's anything overly impressive or widespread. I think it's just kind of a, it does its best. Mostly sunny on Friday, and as we head into the weekend, things are starting to look a little bit drier. We'll talk that coming up in the full forecast. Sounds good, Jeremy. We'll talk to you then. Thank you very much. Well, it is special election night in Washington, and there are several multi-million dollar bonds and levies on the ballot for school districts across eastern Washington. So let's dive into the results for the major races thus far. First, Spokane Public Schools is asking voters to approve a $200 million bond to replace and renovate a few schools. Right now, early returns show a little more than 54% voting in favor of the bond. However, bonds need 60% approval in order to pass, so right now it is not meeting that threshold. Also on the ballot is a nearly $100 million levy for SPS. Right now, Proposition 1 is passing with 54.7% voting yes. Unlike bonds, levies only require a simple majority to pass, so right now this one is passing. The results are a mixed bag for Spokane Public Schools. Between the bond and levy, hundreds of millions of dollars for programs and buildings were at stake. And at least right now, the bond does not have the votes it needs to pass. Krem 2's Amanda Rowley was at an election night's watch party with the superintendent when the early returns came out. This room is full of Spokane Public Schools bond and levy supporters, and they have some mixed emotions here at this election watch party. Initial results on one hand show strong voter support for SPS's levy, but not quite enough support for the bond. The district's $200 million bond would modernize and replace some of the oldest schools in the Spokane Public Schools district, including Adams Elementary. It needs 60% voter approval to pass. Now, the three-year levy replacement will allow the district to keep classroom sizes low, keep extracurricular programs and staffing. It needs 50% approval to pass. Superintendent Dr. Adam Swinyard is grateful for voter support of the levy, but his staff will be watching the bond very closely. We're appreciative of the ongoing support of our levy. Um, the community continues to make that investment in our schools. Uh, we believe that our bond plan is important for 57 schools and over 5 million square feet of space. So we'll definitely want to, to be listening and seeking to understand what the right next step uh, will be. The Citizens for Spokane Schools helped campaign for the levy and bond. They're proud of their work, but also grateful for voter support. Amanda Rowley, Prem 2 News. All right, let's get back to election results. Next up, the Mead School District is asking for support on a three-year replacement levy that expires this year. Early returns show the levy is passing by a narrow margin right now with 51.7% in favor tonight. We'll take a look at a few more key races tonight. In the meantime, you can find more election coverage right now on Krem2+. Plus. It is free to download on Amazon Fire, Roku, and Apple TV. In national news this evening, the House voted to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas just hours ago. It is only the second time in U.S. history that a cabinet member has been impeached. Republicans blame Mayorkas for the border crisis. The vote passed with 214 in favor and 213 opposed. Three Republicans were opposed along with all Democrats. The effort is all but certain to die in the Senate where Democrats do have control. In other national news, the AP reporting tonight that Democrat Tom Suzy won a special election for the U.S. House seat formerly held by Republican George Santos. The victory gives Republicans an even slimmer majority in the House. The former president has sent a dangerous and shockingly, frankly, un-American signal to the world. President Joe Biden with a blistering attack on Donald Trump for recently saying that he wouldn't defend NATO allies from a Russian attack if they don't pay full dues to the alliance. This came after an all-night marathon debate in the Senate that led to the passing of an emergency national security spending bill. It would provide billions in military assistance to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, but says nothing about the U.S.-Mexico border security. Well, it is Boomtown Week here on Krem 2, and we are tracking growth across the inland northwest, including an update on the North Spokane Corridor. According to Washtenaw, the longtime project is 70% complete now, and when it's done, it'll connect communities and bring life back into areas of town that have struggled. The freeway will run parallel to Hilliard and the Market Street Corridor, and some say it's already attracting new businesses and families to the area. Get in now while you can, because we have the... North Spokane corridor, we have new communities coming in and values are just going to increase over time. 
So tomorrow on Up With Krem, Tim Pham takes a look at how much home values have increased and how the North-South Freeway can play a big role in the growth of surrounding communities. Meantime, we are about two months out from a contract deadline for the city's largest homeless shelter. And right now it is still unclear how the city will move forward. Krem 2 Shannon Mowdy looked into what Spokane leaders are considering. You can find that full story on our website. Just head to Krem.com. And that was your Krem 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time.